cha-cha. Caca. 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 <laughs> I gave in to the cha-cha that time. Yeah. Every time in my head, I want to say cha-cha. I never do because I feel like it's it's hack. That's why I've been told by other stand-up comedians. It's trite. It feels good, though. Yeah, it does. And I want to do it. Uh -huh. I don't care. I just had this weird feeling like I didn't know where I was. Um, are you on mushrooms? Nope. Oh, me either. <laughs> For transparency of the show, I'm not either. Um, if I was, I couldn't do the show, to be completely honest. I wouldn't even know. I definitely couldn't. No. I'd be like licking the microphone and be like, this is the best ice cream I've ever had. <laughs> and then James would be like, it's a microphone. Well, uh, welcome to today's podcast. What's up? Nothing. Right. Um, you know, a little, little under the weather. Actually, I'm feeling a little bit better now that I chugged a coffee, but... Ugh. I've been tired all day and I don't know what to do about it. Yeah, I mean, I've been... Where I, I want I, you all right now. But yeah, look at that. Look at that. Ooh, ooh. I've been working overnights and so... Which means 9 p.m. until, I mean, 9 a.m. You can just think 9, 9 to 9. And doing that for a week, today I go, well, well I'm just going to set my alarm to 1. And if I wake up at 1 p.m., I'm great. Uh, no, none of that worked. I <laughs> I woke up and I was fine for like two hours. And then immediately my brain was like, what the fuck? Because mm. I've been sleeping in until like 7, 7, 7.30 at night. And so, you know, Rome wasn't built in a day. That's what my grandfather told me. No, but I don't know why they say Rome wasn't built in a day. Nowhere was built in a day. Nowhere was. Yeah, I never like, thought oh, of what's that. What's so special about Rome? I don't get it. Right. I, Did they build New York in a day? No, I don't think so. I don't think so. London? No. <laughs> <laughs> um. So this is this I'm is clever. A yeah. This is <laughs> clever girl. Yes. <laughs> this is a show where we talk about um uh, games. Is it though? Of the no, not really. No. I mean, it's kind of like we talk about what we want. I mean, it's focused around <laughs> video games. Yeah, it just happens to be that we're nerds and it's all we talk about. Yeah. If if we had other things to talk about, we would talk we about would. them. We would. This wouldn't even... We, I would delete the website. Yeah. But... Unfortunately, though, this, yeah, is, this is all that we have. This is it. I'm invested. Yeah, I'm in. Um. So, we, you know, we were talking about games you've been playing. Oh, yeah. Um. I haven't been playing shit. Yes. I bought my brother um, Elite Dangerous. I was telling James before the show. Yeah. Um, and I'm I'm interested to see what he thinks, because he played a he's played a lot of MMOs. Like he played a lot of Worlds of Warcraft and he Dota two. I mean he's he's a, he's been a gamer forever. And Elite Dangerous is one of those weird games where it's it's either or. I could see him really liking it, or I could see him being like uh, the grind's boring. Yes, but and then so, I mean, we've had this conversation before where I don't even know why I like the game. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't really it to, but, to to be able to predict whether somebody would like Elite is almost impossible. <laughs> yeah, I know you're totally right. It's just kind of like you got to just play it, and it's one of like the few it, you games can... that you're right. You're totally right. I can't. It's almost impossible to predict that. Oh yeah, you would love this game. Mm. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I was kind of a, when I first bought it i was assuming that i wasn't really going to like it that much uh, and i was completely wrong although having said that i have a bit of a love-hate relationship with it anyway so yeah. but i think most people do yeah man yeah. so, um so uh, yeah i played just a tiny bit of that mm -hmm. um and that's it i've been i was in new jersey all week so. mm. Mm -hmm. yeah it sucks the land of the boss yeah union new jersey dude come on nobody wants to go there actually it's not too bad it's just like a suburbia so. Wait, is that different to Union? Isn't there Union City, which is right on the on the water? Atlantic City. Yeah, but there's also U Union City. Oh, where's, really? Where's Union? I'm off to Atlantic City next week. Uh, see, that's more fun. Maybe. No, uh, maybe. I think that's a bit. I'll, that's how I'll make my riches. I'll go to the <laughs> casino, put it all on on black. Yeah. And then boom. And then it turns up red. And then when it turns uh, out red, I I grab the money and then I run and then I get tackled eventually by security, you know, and go to jail. But I'm not coming to get you either. Uh, I wouldn't expect you FYI. to. I'll call my mom. <laughs> she, and then who she, also won't come? And yeah, get who you. also won't do it? She would. She would go. You did what? Well, serves you right. Yeah. I'll, I'll see you in have five fun, to ten. Have fun in prison. <laughs> <laughs> what games have you been playing? Uh, not elite actually. What, I got. What, what? Uh, I got FIFA 15. Which, uh, uh, and I've been totally into that because that's usually what happens when I play those games, soccer games. I get really into it and then I realize how bad they are. 
In fact, I'm, I'm very disappointed that FIFA 15 is not really that different to 14 or 13 or 12 or 11 or 10. So I played a lot of it. How but are the graphics? It, it looks great. I the mean, it, the ball has the ball physics. Very good. <laughs> I mean, the physics actually, the graphics and the physics are quite good. But it's the AI is just fucked. Oh, And really? I've always had the same problem. I like to play career mode which they call Be A Pro, I think. I don't know if that's universal amongst all the EA sports games. But in FIFA, anyway, it's called Be A Pro. Uh, and you, you know, create Well, no, Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. No, EA, like all their EA sports games, they do. I mean, because it's like in, in the basketball game, their big thing is their career mode. And in, in um, what was it, NBA Live or... Well, no, no, I mean, I know that they have career modes. I don't know if they are all called Be A Pro. Oh, yeah, Is yeah, what yeah. I mean. Oh, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, yeah, because I know NBA has it, and uh, mm -hmm. I don't know if NHL does. But I think I know that the new baseball ones do as well. NHL 09 for the Xbox 360. Yeah, I think I don't think they were doing it then. Mm -hmm. I think the Be a Pro thing, because I remember that in FIFA 10 or uh, 11, I think. Anyway, Be a Pro, I always I like to play that because I like to create a character, and then you know you play as him only. So you don't control the rest of the team. You only control that one character, which is which is fun in theory. The problem is, is that the AI is fucking broke, How? particularly in, in FIFA, and it drives me fucking mad. Well, if you don't play, you do actually have the option in FIFA 15. I don't know, remember if this was the case in the newer one, in the older ones, but you do have the option as, of playing, of controlling the entire team. So you create uh, okay. your character who will still get rank up points or whatever right, right. you don't he's just a member of your team now versus like you're him right you're, exactly I'm, I'm that dude but if you play so i like to play where i control only that character the correct character i created but the problem with it is that the ai is just like your teammate ai is just fucking dumb as fuck oh uh, like okay. even when i turn i've turned it up to the almost the di highest difficulty and they're so fucking stupid like i watched yesterday as my players were basically just like you know they were dribbling the ball up to another player uh, a def like a defender or something and it's like oh he's going to take him on and he just like dribbled the ball out of the out of, off the field <laughs> for a throw in and, and there, it wasn't like he got tackled or anything and i i actually went and w went to the instant replay and was like did that just really i mean really did that just happen he literally just like walked off the pitch with the ball and it now is a throw in uh that's awesome but it happens all the time like uh. they're constantly doing shit they won't pass to each other uh, you you can call for passes. Oh um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I always abuse like that, that and, then I, and then I end up like breaking the game because yeah, I'm like, but I mean, pass to me, pass to me, pass to me, pass to me. No, I mean you. Yeah, I mean obviously if you're constantly calling for the ball, they will pass the ball to you, but it might not be the best option. Yeah. yeah. But so I kind of try to use it realistically, where it's like if I'm if I'm running into space or I'm free for a pass, I'll I'll call for the ball, but. If I feel like if I don't call for the ball, they just will not pass it to oh, me. Okay. And they, it's almost yeah, like yeah. they won't, but they won't pass it to each other either. They just run around with the ball all the time. And it's almost like they're waiting for me to tell them what to do all the yeah, time. Yeah, but yeah. I can't do that if I'm, you know, I mean, like I was playing on the left wing. And a lot of the time I'm not getting the ball. I'm not anywhere near the ball. And yet, so I'm just watching them. I realized that I was playing this game and I'm I'm literally just watching the team run around with the ball, losing the ball <laughs> for no reason, and we weren't winning. And I was like, this is fucking ridiculous. Just all the time. They're like, yo, ref, check this out. And then well, they just And kick then as it. soon as I actually took control of the entire team, we were playing like... Yeah. Like at a professional team and actually like doing stuff. So I was like, this is kind of... Yeah. I don't know. It seems kind of broke. Yeah, I mean, it, but it totally makes sense. it's always been that way, it though. It's always been that. I've always had that same frustration, but I kind of like played through it in the previous versions. But in this one, well, I got when's like... when's the last time you've played a soccer game? I've played all the recent FIFA games. Oh, have you? Oh, okay. I didn't yeah. know if there was like a large gap between the last one that you played and this one. No, no then I, I was played like, 14 well... and 13 and 12, 11, 10. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've played them for last... I've played at least the last five, six years of FIFA. Yeah. But, I don't know. It you just know, the seems only weird, sports it? franchise I've done that with is the NHL games. I've always liked hockey games. Yeah. Um, well, it's too bad that they don't have NHL on the PC anymore. I know. Because we determined that 09 is the last... PC version, I think. Correct. Or, or it was a while ago. Yeah, they yeah. They haven't done a PC version. Yeah, it, it was definitely not in the like one zeros. You know what I'm saying? Like in the 2000s. Well, EA, EA definitely have a. a I guess that is still two. That is 2009. That's what it's referring to. Yeah, but it's not like within, like 
O ten or whatever. Weed's a hell of a drug, you know what I'm saying? Um <laughs> well, anyway, I've been playing FIFA. I I started to play oh, you know what I started playing? Um Tell me, tell me, tell me, tell me, tell me, tell Total me. Total War Shogun Two. Oh fuck yeah, I wanna play that game. It's it's pretty good. Is it? How are the graphics? Um they're okay. Well the the last time I played a Total War game, I bought it for I mean, but this was like years and years and years and years ago. And I remember kind of being disappointed because th- back then they didn't have 3D models for your armies. Your armies were actually just two-dimensional characters, but zoomed out really far. Oh, God. So that... That's a long time it, ago, then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I want to say that they were doing 3D stuff like 2007, 2008. So you must be going way back. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, I'm going way, way, way back. Um, for like the original... Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, now... Uh, the 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 uh, total war games look pretty good. I mean, all all of the soldiers are three D models mm-hmm. that kind of sort of act independently of one another. I mean, if you actually zoom in, it is quite quite cool to watch them fighting each other because they well, do and, the animations are pretty good. And in games like those, you know what? I'll never grow sick of. I'll never grow sick of fucking just seeing in a whole like what what do you call those things? A battalion shoot arrows, right? And and because it's like they're all staggered, kind of, but it just oh man, I love those scenes in movies like like uh, what medieval movies. Well, yeah, I mean, I, I've always quite, I've always found quite fascinating the the old way of fighting wars. Yeah, oh you yeah. You line up your dudes, and it's it's not so much about. I mean, it's partly about flanking and all that kind of thing, but it's 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 um it's weirdly it's like tactical, but kind of not tactical. If that makes sense. It's yeah, but it it's, it's tactics like, on a larger level. Yeah, it, and I mean, back in those days with like swords and bows and arrows and shit, I mean, it was. I mean, they had some pretty decent tech, but it was more of a game of numbers. I mean, if you had better armor and more dudes, you know, that's not going to be some crazy victory from the underdog. Um, no, not in those. Well, I mean, I think it's kind of interesting that, you know, you'd, you'd fight on these big open battlefields. And there was almost, back then, there was almost, um, yeah, I mean, they, they talked about the, the code of war, right? So, I mean, I remember reading Wait, about... um what code of war? Well, I mean, like, so the the reason why the um, British had a hard time against the Americans, and similarly, actually, while w- why the Europeans had a hard time against the Native Americans, was because they both, the Americans and the... Well, actually, this is where the Americans uh, learnt these tactics from. They learnt them from the Native Americans, was uh, ambushing. Oh. And stuff like that. But it was like the British didn't understand they were kind of like but you can't do you can't hide in the trees and then jump down on us that's not war <laughs> that's not fair but that you've got it to even be... makes it better because you have a british accent well yeah and it's like <laughs> we had fucking Governor. we had red coats on and we'd line up you know and shoot at people and it's and you know we we were a bit we we're a bit late to the uh to the which advanced is so warfare hilarious party. because what the fuck or what the fuck are you thinking before that british where how is that not a thing oh no what oh wait so what it was i thought that they just didn't think of it like the british were like what ambush i've never heard of this tactic but what you're saying is that they didn't they were like that's you're not playing by the rules yeah basically they oh, were kind okay. of saying that this was this is how we've we fought wars for centuries uh-huh. is that you get on a battlefield you line up and you take on your opponent mm-hmm. And, you know, we uh, warfare advanced to a point where smaller armies were like, yeah, but we can't do that. Right. So right. we've got to figure out a way of... So you started to get camouflages. Yeah, because I mean, I mean if, you, if you rolled in, in there, if it was like 15 and 15, those battles would last like, you know, like five seconds. Well, I mean, like the fucking... The British wore red coats. The French wore blue, I think. You know, there was all it was all very fancy looking. Like very yeah, I know. It's like the whole world's like coordinating it real nice. They're like, well... Yeah, they were. France, what color do you want? Blue? All right, cool. We're going to take red. Um, Poland, what do you got? Uh, well, I mean, like, Arma didn't exist. Right. I mean, the weird thing is, of course, that, I mean... Wait, are you saying Arma the video game? No, Arma, like... Oh, I thought you said Arma no, didn't no. exist. And I was like, they didn't have computers back then, dude. Yeah, but Arma and Arma <laughs> are the same thing. Armor. Yeah. And Arma. Oh, Arma. Right. Yeah. Arma the video game. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways, uh, it's basically the same thing. Got not. Anyway, well, so they didn't, uh, they didn't really know mm-hmm. how to fight, sort of uh, 
in the modern sense. That's w- I mean, that's kind of weird. I guess we were bitches as Americans. Because no? I always think, I mean, like, what you know, you line up a bunch of dudes and then you fire arrows <laughs> at each other. I mean, how does that? Yeah. I mean, also, I mean, I guess I kind of get it. Maybe because death and, like, destruction was more a part of your daily life. But I could not imagine in any capacity being on any part of that battlefield. Right. I mean, uh, hundreds if not thousands of dude dudes are slowly dying because they were stabbed in the neck. And that does it's not like they die instantly. Well no, they're I mean, on the, the ground is, like is that, <laughs> I mean your your chances of surviving in those battles it was simply numbers or Correct. luck pretty it, much. It, yeah, it was like random. It I wasn't mean, because of what you did. If you were on the front line like with the guns, you know, when you mm-hmm. you know when they they would all the line muskets. up and fire their muskets. Yeah. yeah, like the American Civil War. Yeah. I mean people died in that because if you're on that front row, right. well, no, sorry. See ya. Later. Yeah, you're no. not surviving this. Later, dog. So imagine going up and being like, and they're, they're like, right, you're on the front line. <laughs> you're at the front. And they yeah, just go, a, sure. I would position myself as a, the, the doo-doo commands guys. Because, yeah, I, there's no way I would say sure. But, no. You're on the front. You don't have shields or anything. I mean, no. You just have muskets, too. Well, that's you what I'm saying. Hope, you, I mean, you better have, have... They didn't have any, any chest protection or yeah. anything. I mean, I don't think... I mean, the Civil War, they didn't, weren't even wearing helmets. Yeah. They were wearing fucking caps. <laughs> like baseball caps, basically. Yeah. Yeah, it's like it's like they were in the middle of a game of dress up, and then they were like, <laughs> "We we should war, actually." Yeah, like yeah, sure. Hey, you want to shoot each other? Yeah. Hey. Anyway, well, so so what else? Do you, total yeah, how war do you is, like it? Well, it's it's definitely fun. I mean, it's kind of like I mean, because there's a whole thing with getting routed, which is kind of interesting. Routed. Well, I mean, like if you get if a bunch of your dudes get overwhelmed, they can panic, and they'll they'll, oh, uh, they'll okay. run away. The, what's in what I like about it is that you you have a general on the battlefield, and the general, depending on where he is and what he's doing and things like that, he can um he can basically provide morale to your troops to try and stop them from doing things like running away and stuff like that. Oh, like so that's kind of he gives them like unit boat bonuses. Yeah, basically. So um, I mean, I haven't really played much of it, and I don't remember if I don't know if I've ever actually played a total war game before. But I was watching a, a stream of uh, a guy playing the new one, Attila. Yeah, Attila. And I was like, man, this this really looks fun. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't know if I'm going to have the patience for it. We'll see. I was just about to... Aw, I was just about to but, say that. But, you know, weirdly enough, though, I think... Because I, th- I forget who I said this to. It was somebody on our stream. It might have been Wolf, actually. Friend of the show, Wolf. Friend of the show, friend of the show. Cause, oh, because we were talking about... Because um, I, also I played... Um, Warband. A little bit of, uh, yeah, Mountain Blade Warband, which is a little bit like a, almost like a first person version of Total War. Well, and that's what got me interested in it is that at first I was like, all right, I, uh, but then later on when you get bigger armies, that's exactly what I thought of is I thought of the Total War games and I was like, well, that's kind of cool actually. Yeah. <clears throat> I mean, you, you, uh, War, Warband or Mountain Blade is, is a little different. What happened? You know what I never thought? What happens when your dude dies in that game? Uh, I think that's it. To be honest, I'm Ooh, not sure, but I don't know. I, I think there's, yeah. I mean, it's a it's a really hard game. Like, I mean, if you fail a mission because you, you oh no, wait, you went no, in no, 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 willy you, nilly, you, or do you just no? You know what? You do because I did die actually, and uh. you don't. Uh, but what happens is, if you're in the middle of a mission or something like that, that mission's done, basically. Oh, uh, okay. Like you fucked it up. You can't start it over because you died. So, um, but what was I going to say about? Oh, you, well, the thing about uh. The Total War games, which is a reason why I think I might be okay with it, is that in, I know it's a real-time strategy game, but it's not a typical real-time strategy game where you have to base build, resource, and all that stuff. Like right. you literally just have dudes, and that's the, that's the bit that I'm always interested in. Oh, I mean, that's okay. kind of why yeah, yeah, I like yeah. Company of Heroes more than a lot of the other RTSs that that I've played or tried to play. Right, is that you have resource management in. Company of Heroes, but not to the same degree that you do in a lot of others. Well, it's not... Re- it, you don't... Uh, I mean, for all those who haven't played uh, Company of Heroes, the way that that system works, which is actually, now that I think about it, it's pretty ingenious, is they have different types of resources. Um, I think there's three different types. It, it, uh, yeah. Is there? No, might have no more two. than three. Yeah, there might be two of resources. But how you get them is there around the map, there's capture points. But the thing is, is those capture points mean that you took over that territory. And so it's it's cool because it's not just like by your home base and you're like, you know, it's like in StarCraft, you have what, cr- like crystals and gas or something. Um, and so you're, it's beneficial. You not only get the territory, but then you get the bonus. 
Well, and the don't... bonuses are based on because it's like you have more land, so it's kind of like that, that kind of shit, right? We haven't played it in a while. Well, yeah, you're connecting territories together. Essentially, you're creating a supply route. That's yeah. what you're doing. Why don't we play more of that game? Because it is kind of hard. I mean, it it, do, it definitely... Uh, yeah. We make it sound easy. It's not. No. Uh, but it's definitely not... Like, you don't have to set up, like, mining or anything like that and then right. send people out to go and get yeah, stuff. Yeah, you don't have worker units. You literally, like, on. look on the map and you go, right, here's some... There's an ammunition dump over here. There's a fuel dump over here. If I go and capture those, it will connect those regions to the regions that I'm in right now and create a supply route. Yeah. And I will start to get those res- resources. Mm-hmm. And it's that that part of it's very simple, and total war is even more simple because you literally don't do that. You just you've got dudes and you fight. How do you get well? The, okay, and so I then think how do you get more a, dudes? Well, I think there's a period in between, because in the in the story mode, basically, I think that you are there's like a there's like a world map and you're you're kind of going around deciding where to fight and who to fight and there's a lot of politics involved also. Because you you making you're making alliances with uh, well, and those other games always are kind like of like civilization, right? Yeah, a little bit because okay. there's no, the resource ma- there is no resource management, right? Uh, but there is like sort of uh, faction management, okay. which is to say that you can make friends with certain territories and what have you in order to make you know your next battle against somebody easier or something like that. I don't know. I'm a, I'm a, I'm not entirely sure how all that works, but I know that that kind of imp- appeals to me more. Like making friends and enemies Mm -hmm. and then fighting based on those decisions that I've made and having certain types of troops based on, you know, things that I've done rather than having to literally do that on the battlefield. Because I kind of feel I get overwhelmed very easily with that kind of stuff because it's like when you're getting attacked, it's I'm just trying to worry about other things. I mean, with RTS games, it's kind of weird because I I don't know if maybe I. It's like I play too many games where you have direct control of the character. So when I play RTSs, it, I have to play them a lot in order for to get my brain used to the fact that you, I shouldn't be paying attention to every unit as though that was my main unit. You know what I'm saying? Well, that's my problem so with the company I start of heroes. To, I start to get worried because it's like... I remember playing like Command & Conquer and all of those games back in the day. And half of the time I would actually just... I would spend looking in my main base and upgrading and then when i had units i would just click on the unit go head out this way you know what i'm saying and so but i get it's like i get anxiety because i'm like fuck i know i have dudes but they're out of the map i can't see them but uh." yeah i I was doing the same thing that's why i was struggling a bit with company of heroes yeah because i was i was spending too much time worrying about each fucking unit that i had right instead of focusing more on getting you know, well, and Company units. of Heroes is is an even easier game to just send units to an area and then let them sit because if they just sit there and they can they auto attack just fine and so it's you don't need to they have a real discernible range that they can attack in so you just go fine you go chill here um, whereas I think in in a game like Starcraft I think units have powers like you have little abilities and stuff well they have powers in that game too right. In Company of Heroes? Mm-hmm. Well, you upgrade yeah, that's what it is. Uh, units. Yeah. And, and I mean, you do kind of want... Ideally, you do want units to stay alive because I think the more action they get, the because you can level up specific units, right? Right, right, or right. Like squads of tr- uh, troops. Yeah, the tanks in those games were pretty cool. Yeah. Well, I think the, learn- the learning curve is a little mm-hmm. kind of steep, I think, because I seem to remember we played on easy and it was like we just rolled over dudes. And then as soon as we beat bumped it up to medium or whatever. Do you remember? It was like they all of a sudden they just had like 100 half-tracks everywhere. Yeah, like yeah, the yeah, that's what it, yeah, yeah, yeah. They had a whole and bunch like, of like what? armored no, vehicles and we didn't have any. I had no armored vehicle. I had no vehicles at all. I, all I had was f- fucking Did infantry. we quit out of that game? Maybe. Yeah, we might have. I remember. I just remember all of a sudden, all at once, the computer was like, later, bitch, and sent everything at us. Yeah. But the, the the troop the unit uh, stuff in there is pretty cool because you can you can make uh, commanders that you can assign to units and and that strengthens them and things like that. So right. Um. Well. Anyways, what else have you been playing? Uh. Anything? Do, do, do. Anything? I was playing some more Sleeping Dogs on on Twitch. Yeah, I saw you for a little bit there. That was fun. Yeah, that game always. Whenever you played it, I'm always like, this game's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, I'd forgot how I always forget how good it is. Yeah. Uh. Although it, it does 
I don't know, I'm playing it for the second time and it, it gets a little bit samey. Well, I thought the same thing. I mean, that's why I never finished it. I got about three quarters of the way through and I had a great time, but then it's like I hit a point where I was like, no, I'm done. Kind of done. Kind of done with this. I, what I realized is I think the game world needs to be a bit bigger or a little mm. bit more um, diverse because it's not really, I mean, I know it's Hong Kong. I don't know how diverse Hong Kong is, but I mean, one of the fun things about, I'm mean, thinking specifically, of course, GTA is that um, there's lots of different environments inside the city and outside it. Whereas I feel like in Sleeping Dogs, everything just kind of looks the same. And the actual game world itself gets a bit boring. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like the game world's real cool, but... And to be honest, the cars aren't really that much fun either. Like, the driving's okay, do they have a but it's quick, not great. Do they have a quick travel system in that game? I can't remember. No. Like, you can't just go teleport to places? Oh. No. I think that was another thing that kind of annoyed me well, most... about that game. Well, I don't know. No, because I mean, in GTA, of games you can set a waypoint, and then you can just... Um, no, not... like hail a taxi. Oh yeah. Oh well, yeah. You can do that in in. Uh... Oh okay. I just never bothered to do it. Oh yeah, you can, can't you? I mean, I kind of. I mean, the thing with GTA though, specifically, is that I. It's a lot of fun to drive around in GTA. I I enjoy the vehicles. I, mean, oh, I guess maybe that's, that's kind of my point. Too. In uh, in Sleeping Dogs, I want to. I do want to drive around the city because it's fun. Right. It should be fun, but it's actually not that much fun. Um. Anyway, I don't know. Nice. I'm trying to think. Uh, that's I mean, probably it, really. Yeah. I'm, I was... What was I mean, I've been playing older games, today. not really... Not any newer games. I, I, You know, I, the game I constantly think about, but I never play is Assassin's Creed. Black Flag. Black Flag. Yeah, you know, I've tried... I'm, I'm kind of tempted... Well, because I, I was... Uh, I attempted to finish Wolfenstein... Oh, and try the new um, one, maybe the, 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 new, like, the order. New, new order, new blood. Because um, I'm pretty close to the end of it, but I started to play it, and I was like, oh, I don't know, I don't know what happened, and I kind of feel like maybe Black Flag's the same. Yeah, I just really got burnt out on Black Flag. I really enjoyed it for the time that I played it, but I don't know if I've got re- any real incentive to finish it. Yeah, and I didn't. I did, I'm trying to remember how far I got, but I mean, I just got I got the boat, and I was able to upgrade the boat. I think you've but still like got a lot one of, or two things. I think you've still got it. a lot of fun to be had. I I played oh, no, a totally. heck of a lot more. I mean, I got to a point where my ship was completely upgraded. I pretty much can't buy anything useful. Uh, yeah. And I don't know. The story was starting to get. To be honest, I the story there was there's so much story in that game that I was confused. I was like, I don't even know what's going on. Well, I'm interested to see if there's. Okay, so answer me this. Mm. Is there more riddle of the this. riddle me this? Riddle, wait, riddle me this. Who? What does he say after that? I don't know. He says a riddle. Uh, and then he says a riddle, huh? Mm. To who? Batman, right? Yeah. Okay. Um. To is, himself. What? Yeah. He just. You know. He just says it to himself. Riddle me this, and he's thinking. Riddle me like, this, what? Riddler, and then he gets confused. And then yeah, then he confuses himself. That's how you beat the Riddler. <laughs> yeah. Is you go riddle me this. Wait, wasn't that how he beat him in the in the movie? Didn't he give him a riddle that he couldn't solve? Oh, maybe. And, and then it, like, he had to kill himself mind. or something. I forget. His his mind went completely crazy or something. Anyway. So, um, um, I'm trying to think here. I lost my train of thought. Oh, the real, like the future stuff. Mm. You know, you're a pirate, but, you, but you're really um. Oh, yeah, you're at working. Abstergo, right? Yeah, is yeah. Is that what it is? Yeah, Abstergo. Is there any more of that? Um, Yeah, there was. I'm trying to remember what... I, there, it was kind of weird because it, nothing really ever came of that as... Because I must have put 30 or 40 hours into that game. Uh, I mean, I was pretty... I want to say I was probably about 70% in. I must have been at that point. And I do remember there was something with Abstergo. There was... I don't know, like the head dude was... You come across him like having an argument with somebody in an office room or something. But I don't know, nothing ever really... It all seemed a bit pointless. I don't know where that was going. I have no idea. But to be honest, it was kind of rubbish. Also, you couldn't sprint, which really pissed me off. Yes. I, that it pissed me off immediately, ever. too. Yeah. yeah. And it was always like, there was all these parts of that office that looked interesting. Mm-hmm. and But you'd go there and there's nothing there. Yeah. And then you'd be like, great, now I have to walk well, back to where I was well, going. Well, and the elevator takes... I mean, just everything takes forever in that in the Abstergo world. Yeah, yeah. <sighs> it's horrible. And it was like, most of it's pointless. Yes. So that sucks. Because that... Uh, 
when that part came in the game, I remember going, what the fuck? I didn't know at all that you, that that was the, the story of it. Well, it was kind of cool. Because, because the I mean, last, the last Assassin's Creed, I kind of even, was the standard plot where you're just like a dude and they're trying to get memories out of you or something. Well, that's where he's in the Animus. Right. But I like to, Abster- I, the idea is kind of cool because yeah. Abstergo is actually a media company and they're creating. They're creating like, inter- interactive experiences for their customers. Out based off of real memories, real right? memories, but because memories are in the DNA, and so they have right. DNA from like I don't know, maybe dudes back. But we're then not or really something. sure. You're not really sure in Black Flag, are you? Who like whose memories you're? Oh, you're well. Who who is accessing the memories? You are. You are because you're the employee, and what you have to do is you have to harvest. But who? So the question is, who are you as the employee? I guess R- that's right, the story, right? right. right? Well, I, and well, for some reason, con- I always got a vibe of Lost. Yeah. <laughs> um anyway that was, a, that was an abrupt yeah. yeah yeah um so oculus yes do you i guess we'll go to the news huh or unless you have anything else i feel like there's a there's a there's a like a third game that i was playing but i don't know what it was i mean i would like i'd love to hear about it even if you had a fourth i'd love to hear about that too buddy no I can't 10 four good buddy it was rubbish um oculus rift uh-huh. since they announced uh, release date, which is next year, I think, early next year. Mm. Um, minimum specs, which oh, right. the video card portion actually, I just read it, but the video card portion kind of shocked me because I don't have that. Um, you'll need an NVIDIA GTX 970 Whoa. or an AMD 290 equivalent, which Wait, apparently. A minimum or, or? Minimum. Damn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It says the company. Uh, blah, blah. That's the card I have, the 970. Yeah, so minimum just... s- system specs. Um, and into the, I mean, what's weird is I guess you do need a better graphics card. Well, but the what? Well, what so, the but the, so these are specs that are different. This is for the actual yes. retail release versus because the dev kit must have a much lower um, spec, right? Or does it I mean not? I don't know what the spec is, but I know that they haven't given an official one. You know, like the this is the first time that since I mean I guess since they're releasing the you know, the public version, they've got to come up with a minimum specs, but I don't think they ever have before. So I guess I wonder what they are. I don't know. Cause I mm-hmm. feel like people, mm-hmm. people have been playing with an Oculus who don't necessarily have super beefy computers. I mean, I was always under the impression that, you know, it was somewhat forgiving. I, I wonder, if, I wonder the if the hardware is better. Necessary. Why is the graphics card so necessary though? Cause that's everything. But isn't it all in the hardware of the goggles? Um, no. no. No, I want to say nothing's in the hardware of the goggles. Oh, hey, well, what's in the goggles then? The, the ability to see in 3D. Fuck, I didn't just make that myself. I mean, re- I mean realistically, the the Oculus, as far as I know, um, is it's that's it. It's like a TV. It's a 3D TV that you strap to your head. Yeah, but TVs have, like, shit in them. I don't have to plug well, my but, TV into something else to get it to work. Well, right, but... Yeah, you do. You have to plug it into your cable provider or well, a computer yes, I mean, or gotta, something like that. See? Yeah, but I mean, it's not like dun, super dun, dun, hard. Dun. It's not like fucking crazy expensive hardware that I have to plug in. That's yeah, because it's modem. displaying a fucking, it's displaying a video. A TV can display, I can, it, TVs can display a video on my thumbnail, you know? I'll just put a thumb drive in there. Uh, what? On your thumbnail? <laughs> yeah. I had something else for that, but then I went, I, but then I went on. Anyways. Um, well, all right. So. Yeah, so that the, seems pretty high. Yes. Um, computer. Yeah. I swear to God, if you don't stop shaking, I'm going to punch you in the head. No, my, my, my I, legs I, you, are like, you do have literal ants I'm in anxious. your pants? Okay. Do I make you anxious? No. Okay. Yes. Yeah, perfect. Um, <laughs> it needs an Intel i5, uh, 4590 equivalent or greater. Not sure what that is. I Mine's an i7, so pff, whatevs. Right. Um, eight gigs RAM. Compatible HDMI 1.3 video output. I mean, I'm not keeping up to date. I'm not, I'm not up to date on HDMI standards. No. Um, two USB 3 ports. Two? Yeah. USB and, 3? Yeah. Damn. Yeah. Um, and a Windows Windows 7 SP1. What? <laughs> Service pack. No, no, I know that, but I'm saying like gtx 970 but i mean windows 7's okay nobody uses real i mean windows 7 is like well i'm eh. surprised that eight gigs of ram i mean that's not a huge amount Mm -mm. really i mean not by today's standards most most people that play games have got like 16 at least yeah 
I think I have 32 in mine. Or 16. Maybe 16? I don't know. Um, I mean, unless it's really super... But I, I, even then, I don't know that 8 gigs is... Oh, I suppose 8 gigs is probably enough. I don't know. Well, I mean, for for somebody like me, this is kind of bad news. Because well, I'm, I'm, I have everything but that video card. Hmm. So if I needed to buy a 970... I have to buy the Oculus, which, you know, I, I don't know if they released a price, 300 well, bucks. When, when is the, so they've, what's the release date? Um, I don't know the exact release date and I can look it up in a sec, but it's, I know that it's the beginning of next year. Well, so, I mean, I don't know if those minimum specs are going to change, but the beginning of next year, the 970 is going to be probably quite cheap. That would be great for me. Oh, well, I mean, it's going to be a lot cheaper than it is now. Yeah. Because I mean, I'm assuming that the, I mean what the article says is that it's for it's the upper end enthusiast, which makes sense. What is, um, like the type of computer you need is for you know it's not it's not like these dudes who have like you don't need like a three thousand dollar computer, but the video card, that's something else. Hmm. Dun 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 dun. dun. Well, I don't know. Mm-hmm. Um, actually, I've got I've got a, a, an interesting little thing on the subject of VR. A little tiddly widdly. Yeah. I think a lot about VR, James. Well, I think a lot about the types of games that you would be able to make. Did I ever tell you, you about the make. VR I used to play when I was younger? No. Um, I forget what the game was called. but it... Was it the Virtual Game Boy? No. No, no. <laughs> I mean, I, I did play that once, the a Virtual Boy. Yeah. Um, Horrible. It was at the movie theater that we used to go to. And it, you, like, stepped into, like, it was, like, this whole thing. And it was expensive. It was, like... I want to say like 10 minutes was $15. Yeah. And that was $15 like 20 years ago. So, um, but you put on the goggles mm-hmm. and you had like a little gun thingy and the, the dudes look like shit. I mean, it was like my cell phone has 10 times better graphics than that, but it felt like VR. Like I felt like I was really there, you know, like you would turn around and. I remember so, there was a video game was show fun. in a, there was a video game TV show in England called games master. <laughs> back in the 90s and they had this whole thing where uh yeah they had a vr machine and i just oh, thought that was no really shit. cool on the well, show this this one also was multiplayer and so you could either play single player where you would run around and just kill like npcs around the area or uh, somebody in the next one so when you had a buddy in there it was actually kind of cool and there's this fucking pterodactyl that would <laughs> swoop down and try to get you every once in a while uh, for, I think a, a lot of people forget that VR has been around for a long time. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's like 20 years old now. It's kind of amazing that it takes them this long. But I mean, at 500, for, for me at $500, or not 500, that would be six minimum. Yes. Uh, that's well, yeah, that's a like, steep investment. Yeah, but right now, I don't know what the 970 is going to cost next year. That would be great. I mean, I I have a 970 and it cost me 300. That, yeah, that's what they said in the article. So, and that was, I don't know what they cost now, but that was maybe six six months ago or... Well, no, maybe less, four. Anyway, I don't know. We'll see. But see, so VR so VR gaming is something that I'm I'm pretty interested to see what they're going to come up with. And this, this caught my attention. Uh, it's called, uh, it's a game uh, that's been developed for the Oculus, uh, for Oculus Mobile VR Jam, whatever that fuck that means. It's called SMS Racing. Oh, I read the, t- I read the title of the article, but not the article. It, there's a video on uh, on Polygon. They have a. Um, I'm sure you could just look it up, but it's re- it's actually a really. It's a, like a. I don't. This isn't the kind of game that you'd play a lot of, but it's it's the kind of thing where I'm like, oh, that's kind of cool. I I see where you know this is how you could actually use VR. So it's called SMS Racing because the whole point of the game is that you have to race and text at the same time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it, the video is actually really, really funny because the way that it works is that you have a cell phone in your in your hand virtually as you're driving. So you've got one hand on the wheel and another hand on a cell phone. And in multiplayer, um, and I, I'm assuming it works the same way in single player, but in multiplayer, it seems like it'd be even more fun, is that uh, you you have friends in your phone and your friends will send you text messages and you have to you have 10 seconds to send a response. Oh, yeah, they they played that on Giant Bomb, but not with an Oculus. I don't know why you'd... Like, with, without the Oculus, I don't know why you'd even bother. Yeah. It's the kind of thing where I'm like... It kind of highlights to me how uh, how the VR would 
can you know really make that difference well i mean the to me the biggest thing though is i i still don't think they they've solved the issue of input like in virtual reality either i mean with an xbox controller or a flight stick or something but what if it, what if it's for a game that needs that's multiplayer that needs a keyboard how are you going to do that I have the Oculus on my head. I can't see a keyboard. And oddly enough, as much as I type on a keyboard, I couldn't type blind on a keyboard. I have to look at the keyboard still. And so and and then if you had an in-game keyboard, it you know what I'm saying? It would it would be weird to try to type shit out with a mouse or something. Um well, I don't know because I'm I'm most curious the- for that. That's my that to me that's my biggest concern with it, especially since it's only f- since Oculus is PC. PC, there's a lot of games that will need a keyboard. Yeah, but most of the games that you use uh, the Oculus with right now are keyboard only. Yeah, I, I mean, mean, look at Elite Dangerous. Well, you need. I mean, you need a keyboard for that. And yeah, if I needed to type to people, there's no way I could. I'd be messing them up all day. I'd be saying in, in the pooper, and I would actually well, be saying on my left. So maybe I mean, th- I think the way to to get around that would be voice voice commands. But voice commands aren't to the point yet where it's like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I mean, well, dog. No, but well, I mean, voice commands, they're not to the point where it would be perfect. I mean, you would still have a problem. I guess you you could just be like delete. Also, I still feel weird about talking to myself in a room. <laughs> well, I mean, then and then there's the problem of how do you? You'd have to have like a, a um push the talk or something. Yeah, you would definitely need to push to talk if you're doing the whole engines. Engines engage. Well, yeah, but I mean, like, so a big VR game is uh, is armor. Yeah, I yeah, mean, yeah. Vo- voice command. I mean, that game is already busted. People, when you can see the keyboard, <laughs> yeah, it is. So I don't know what you're gonna do. I don't know what you're gonna do when you um when you can't see it. So I don't know. Yeah. Anyway, I, I mean, I mean, I'm excited. I th- I think this is great. Um. Well, I like the idea. You know, just of, a small concern. I like the idea of texting and driving, but I know that that uh, that game works with a controller. The controls are pretty simple. Yeah. yeah. Well, no, because the thing is, is that you're you're typing in uh, specific responses. Oh, okay. That and you makes have sense. to hit certain buttons on your controller. But the thing is, is that you can't just the, the you can't just memorize where the where the buttons are because they're randomized every time a text uh, message comes okay. in. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. That's how so, it was working. Yeah, it's not you don't you don't actually physically type stuff in. It's not like you're having to type in a response or anything. I mean, you are, but you're doing it through a controller, and it's like a predetermined response. But it's basically like it's like a quick time event whenever the phone goes off. But if you don't do it within ten seconds and you don't respond correctly, then you lose a friend. And then you can lose the re- you can be disqualified from the race if you lose all of your friends. Yes, I mean that would be but, better with the Oculus than with just the, with just a monitor because the problem that they were having on Giant Bomb was that it was it was all or nothing. At least with the Oculus, you can kind of you know you can kind of like half look, half look up. But with the when they were playing it, it was either snap the view to the cell phone or snap to the yeah, you know, and that was it. And so when you would go text, you would just go down and be like, "Well, hopefully I don't crash." I don't. Yeah, I don't really see the point in playing it without the Oculus. But yeah. I, when I was watching the footage of it with the Oculus, it seemed like it was actually quite fun. And I do like the idea of a <laughs> a basic racing game where you're kind of having to worry about something other than racing the car, which is kind of a new idea. Yeah, I like that. Um, do you hear about this with the Twitch, the Twitcheroonie, Los Twitch? Uh, yes, I did. I was emailed by Twitch, or we were actually. No way. Yeah, yeah the uh, Twitch is reducing the delay in streaming games. Well, and they said, but it may not be for everybody. Yes, I've actually turned that on on our Twitch account. Yes, to see what happens. Mm-hmm. I'm in. They said it. Um, it will reduce it by thirty three percent overall. Yeah, but. It might cause uh, buffering. Yeah, it might cause buffering on the viewer's end, mm-hmm. not our end. Right. If the if the viewer doesn't have very good internet. Right. I mean, to be honest, I kind of I like that idea. It's almost like a, I hate would I hate excluding like you know a certain portion of people, but for us as streamers, the shorter you can get that delay, the better because the easier it is to interact with the chat because it's. A 30 second delay sometimes can be rough. Yeah, and I don't know how because, many 
I mean, I'm trying to think of the people that watch us on Twitch. I don't know necessarily that everybody has terrible internet. I mean, I don't know how bad it has to be. Right. I mean, it's the kind of thing I think. You I don't know if they're just saying for dial up users. They're like, yo, <laughs> only for you, AOL. Well, I think that you, you probably just need to turn it on and see what happens. I mean, that's that's but that was basically my idea. Because at first I was like, eh, I don't I don't want people to be having to buffer our stream. But then at the same time, just I mean, I think if it if it's because I always notice if if the stream cuts off or somebody's having a problem, they usually say mm. they usually like, oh, your 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 stream skipping or something. So yeah, I mean, but the it, weird thing is though is I think it's most of the time it's on their end. Um, I mean, so not time, on yeah. their end, but it's it's kind of like tw- uh, it's Twitch. It's like YouTube. When YouTube videos buffer and act funny, sometimes they work right, but sometimes they don't. Well, actually, you know, remember I had that problem with the my stream just when I was streaming that time, and it just wouldn't work. It just cut the stream off and wouldn't work. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. That happened to me again uh, on Wednesday. What? How'd you fix it? Well, because the thing was, I streamed, uh, I streamed uh, Sleeping Dogs for uh, like four hours. And then I took a, and then I stopped streaming, but then it was like late and um, my girlfriend went to bed oh. and I was still awake and like, you were, re- you were, so I decided to, to play FIFA. You're party popping. Well, I did. Yeah. I mean, I, I popped some pills. <laughs> yeah. He <laughs> took some E. Yeah. He's a big uh, E head. I mean, James, he, he, all he talks about is Molly um, and he, he listens to rap songs. About I crushed Molly. up some E and snorted it yeah. and then, and then rubbed some of it in my eyeballs. Yeah. I was just about to say straight to the eyes. Yeah. Did you know that, um. The cells on your eyes, so like this, the, like the little cells, are like the on the outside of your eye, the membrane. Yeah, they get oxygen from the air. They're like the they're the only cells in your body. They don't get it from your lungs. They, that's why your eyes in the wind are open. They get oxygen. That's the one of the coolest facts about the human body. That's why contacts, early contacts, would like make people go blind because it would actually suffocate their eyeball. Oh yeah, yeah. I've heard that. So well now because now they've got the contacts they breathe breathable. The more you know, dun dun dun. Yeah, don't put glass contacts in, basically. Yeah, um, well, just like they used to put. Did you know they used to use crazy sponges from the ocean for tampons early on? Sure. And then they were just. But the thing is, is if when those dry out, those are like hard. Like mm. some of that shit's made of essentially the same material as my bones. Yeah, it's like fiber. It's like pulling fiber glass out of your veg. <laughs> <laughs> is it weird that my dick just hurt because of that? <laughs> oh. Anyway, what was I saying? Who knows? Uh, Read a book. What were we talking about? Um, Twitch streaming, reduced streaming delay. Who knows? Oh, yeah, it was mm-hmm. the firewall. That's what caused me to have problems. Oh, nice. It was weird, though, because... Um, Did yeah, you I just streamed... open that specific port? Well, I no, no. I streamed... I was streaming fine. I streamed... Um... Yeah, Sleeping Dogs, and then I took a break, and then I, uh, I, I wanted to stream FIFA, and it just wouldn't let me. And then I, I I had to allow it through the advanced firewall settings. No shit. OBS and then it works fine. So anyway, there's weird stuff that happens sometimes. But I don't know, I don't know why it is that they've rolled this out with Twitch. That's the only thing. Because no, I, mean, um, I, I mean, I think that I. I always thought that you got a better that you had less delay if you were a partner. No, I want to say at the at the bottom of the article that I read. Um, the original release said that, but Twitch actually contacted them and were like, no, it's not just for partners. It's for everyone. No, no. I mean, before this. Oh, okay. A partner uh, had, because I, I know that you get a better, you get better bandwidth. Oh. As a partner, you get priority bandwidth. Ooh. So that you can, you can actually stream at a higher bit rate than you would be able to usually. Mm-hmm. Because I think I don't think Twitch supports more than three thousand kpbbs. I don't even know what whatever that means. the fuck it means. Um. Anyway, well, I we'll do have to try it. per second. We'll have to try it out. Um. Yeah. Did you play Castlevania Symphony of the Night? Nope. Are you serious? Yes. Yeah, uh, you're a weirdo. Never really liked Castlevania. Yeah, I never really liked you. So kinda, how's that? Weird. How'd that feel? Like try that on for size. Vampires, spiffy. weird shit going on. Um. Not appealing. Bloodstained. So the dude who did one of the the former Castlevania producer for Symphony of the Night, Koji Igarashi. It, it's Igarashi? Who knows? Uh, making a new game. Not the biggest fan of this title. Bloodstained Ritual of the Night. That's why I don't play those games. They've got stupid names. I, I totally agree. I mean, what? No, 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 no. So 
Castlevania, I think Symphony of the Night is fine. I think that's actually better, but like ritual, ritual, bloodstained. Mm. Come on, bro. Um, he had a Kickstarter for his new game, and then he made one point seven five million dollars. Good God! Uh, yeah, he, he was only asking for five hundred thousand, which is kind of nice. I've noticed. Uh, have you noticed that on Kickstarter, most people only ask for about five hundred thousand to eight hundred, and they always get like two mil. Yeah. Why don't they just ask for two mil and then you know get four? But I want to say though, um. What I heard on Giant Bomb, who probably read more on it than than me, they were saying that it's kind of shady-ish, where if you read into the details, there's no game. Like, there's no anything, but the Kickstarter page makes it seem like it's essentially like an early access game. But there's actually no game whatsoever. It's almost like they're 3D rendered images of what they think the gameplay might look like. <laughs> kind of a thing. Yeah. Um... And well, so, actually, that's which a, is weird. But that's a little bit like that game that we talked about last podcast, the um the staff the the ship uh fighting game. Remember I, I brought that up? Mm-hmm. That guy that had done the X Wing games. Oh, it's kind of the yeah, same yeah. thing. They've got absolutely no footage or mm-hmm. actual gameplay of any kind. I'm not sure if they have videos. I mean, maybe they do have videos that maybe look They've like got gameplay, concept but art in the case of that Starfighter or whatever it's called. It, and also too, there was something weird about it where that's not just to make the game. That's um, I I don't know how to, what to put it like, because they want to make an uh Xbox One and PlayStation Four version like that's off the bat. Mm. So they want press discs or something weird, but the it's like money that they're gonna go and take it to a developer. You know what I'm saying? It's just weird. Apparently, all of it's weird. Um, <laughs> long story short, I'm for this. If it turns out to be, I don't even care if it's a wholesale ripoff of Castlevania. Um. As long as it's just two, you know, like two D, make them three D characters. It doesn't have to be sprites. <laughs> I don't give a shit. Give me a, give me a castle because that game had such an awesome give me a RPG. Vania. Yeah, and give me an upside down castle while you're at it. Because <laughs> well, in Symphony of the Night, once you beat it, then you went to the upside down castle, which it what was about? literally just the castle flipped upside down, but the enemies were different. Can we do an inside out castle? I like that idea. Um, don't hassle my castle. Do That's you... the placard I have on the outside. <laughs> Tickle my pickle. Uh huh. Do you like to play um games where you With play at night time? Um, what's your general feeling? You know, night time you... in games. Yeah, it, not a lot of them do it right. To be honest, I, well, I think it's in order at. I mean, like the night time needs to be atmospheric, not just dark. Whereas some games, I think they're just like, no, 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 just turn the brightness all the way down. But it's it's not just that. It's about, like, Alan Wake did it really, really well. Yes. When you're running through those forests at night with, like, the rain and the wind, you, you, it wasn't just a darkened version of the game. It, you were like, holy shit. Like, it feels like you're outside, kind of. Well, I was trying to think, okay, so because the reason I bring this up is because the, the H1Z1 devs uh, have got some of their data back. And it turns out that H1Z1 players are afraid of the dark. Um, basically, uh, the story, it's, I mean, it's pretty straightforward. Nobody plays H1Z1 on a server that is currently at, set to nighttime. Which is true mostly of DayZ, which the article did bring I want to play well. GOAT-Z. Okay. I wonder if it has multiplayer. That reminded me of it. Oh. I wonder um, if it has nighttime. Yeah. So... Th- they were afraid of the dark. But do, do the servers cycle night day? Yeah, I mean, it basically works the same way. So, I mean, think of a game like uh, Rust, DayZ, uh, seven, oh, yeah, seven Ways to Die, actually... or Seven Days to Die. Mm-hmm. Um, any of those, basically, those zombie apocalypse games, they have day-night cycles. Oh, yeah. The problem is, is that nobody really likes to play at night. Some people do, but the well, majority of players the don't. The DayZ servers, they have... I mean, most of them that we've played on were, were like no night, right? Yeah, daytime only. Yeah. Well, so apparently on, on the H1Z1 servers, there is no... I don't think there's an official nighttime or uh, day only. But oh, they're considering okay. doing it now because they've determined that most people do not want to play at night. And in fact, when it turns night, any server that turns to nighttime, pretty much everybody just logs off and goes somewhere else. 
That's Which has so always been the, funny. Yeah, but I mean, that's always been the case with DayZ. We, yeah, we did the exact same thing. We did but, the same thing with the standalone and um, the mod. Yeah, but I think that what's interesting about that is that, yeah, I thought the same thing as you did when I when I first read this. I thought, well, how do you make nighttime? Because the H1Z1 devs are going, oh, we want to try and figure out how to make nighttime more interesting. And I was like, yeah, but how do you do that? But I, I was trying to think of games that, I mean, like, yeah, so... Alan Wake is a good example mm-hmm. of a, I mean that's not multiplayer but you could do it it's just an atmosphere uh, I was actually thinking Dying Light was quite good yep Dying, Dying Light's great and uh, Minecraft is actually quite good at night and I think the reason is because it cha- stuff changes at night I mean in the case, if you look at uh, Dying Light and Minecraft the mm. two things the one thing that they both have in common in their night time is that you get new new enemies at night right new harder enemies at much night. more difficult enemies um, and there's there's like because, I mean, in, in the case of Dying Light, you get, like, double XP or something, right? For right, step, right, right. For surviving at a night. Oh, that's a great Similarly, a great, I think great in thing. Minecraft, there's... Well, no, you don't get double XP, but you... Well, no, there's a lot of materials and experience. If you want experience right. in that game, and you don't just want to sit there and mine and whatever, the quickest way is to essentially farm experience at night with the creeps around your house. Right. Um, but, the, but the thing in Minecraft that was always interesting was with the destructive environment... You kind of wanted to get away from your house because they would spawn those exploder dudes. And so that's kind of a cool way because you don't want them blowing up in your yard because they'll dig holes. Yeah. Oh, Big man. old fucking holes. Well, I had I had an exploder guy blow up the... We have like a waterfall hideout that we talked about. The little entrance into it. He blew off half of it. <laughs> and I was like, no. Um. Well, I think that's... But how would you... So how would you kind of... How would you? I mean, let's take yeah H one Z one for example. Well, I mean, you, I mean, you would have would to you just that? have to make the zombies harder. Yeah, but is there? An, but there's not an experience system in that game, right? I don't think so. Because it's like the the reason why in DayZ you don't you don't want to is because it's just harder to see zombies, you know. And so, but you don't level up or get experience, so there's no point to no, play I mean, at night. That, I think that's the problem: is that these games that we're talking about. Oh, they give you a reason to play at night. No, well, no, I mean the games that we're talking about in the case of Daisy, H one Z one, Rust are the three that I think of. Like nighttime in all those games sucks. Yeah, because there's no reason to be out. The only thing that happens at night is that you can't see anything. Right. So basically, you've just made the game. You've made it harder on me, For but no not reason. in some kind of clever way. Right. It's literally just I can't see anything. Mm. And I mean, you know, you can go around with a flashlight, I guess, or but I mean, in, in the case of DayZ, that I mean, that game's so fucking big that it's really easy to get lost. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And even yeah. if you're playing with another k- player, it's like I've played with other people at night, and it's fucking really hard. Well, that to be honest, that's the one. If Daisy wants to get me back in standalone, they need to make it standard, like a spawn option, so I can just spawn by James. Literally, if you put that one thing in, Daisy is still a mediocre game that pisses me off, and I don't really play, <laughs> but. You you give me the ability to always play with James, and I'm in. Because, you know, it turns... that. Did you hear that, Dean Hall? Yeah, did you hear that, Dean Hall, who's done with Daisy and kind of started a weird Kickstarter because you're a weird dude, but I kind of <laughs> like you? Yeah. Yeah, he's he's weird. I like him, but... Ooh. Yeah. Whoa, 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 what's going on in, in that throat? Uh, I just threw up in my mouth for a minute. It's because um, we mentioned Dean Hall. Oh, yeah. That's, and I was like... <laughs> yeah, that, that's your that's now your natural response to hearing yeah. his name. <laughs> it's like the cat and the bananas. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, man, you're the cat and he's your, he's your banana. Yeah, exactly. I mean, that's a weird thing to say. He's an unpeeled banana. Um, Nanner. Well, on that note... Mm. That's it. Are we done? Yeah. Awesome. Sure. I <laughs> wanted to be done as soon as we started, but... I, know. I didn't even want to do this at yeah, all. Yeah, I never do. It's rubbish. It's... I don't care. <laughs> um, visit the website, uh, Twitch, YouTube, Uh huh. that kind of shit. We have it all. I mean, come on. Email even. Email us. Yeah, email us. Renegade I'd like Agent to, I'd like Show. To, yeah. Renegade Agent Show at gmail.com. At gmail.com. Drop us a line. Drop, is that what is that what you still just, say with just email? Say gay, gay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's that's still my favorite YouTube comment. Yeah, is some dude just that was simple, easy. He just says gay. Yeah, and I think I immediately thumbsed it. I was like thumbs up. You know what? Actually, do you know what? Do you know why he said that? 
He actually put it on a couple of our videos. Oh, no way. I upset him because I, I accused uh, a, a very well-known YouTuber of being a hack oh. on, his, on his, one of his videos. No way. Yeah, and I got, I got, a, lot of, I got a lot of heat from, <laughs> from his fan base. Uh, including one per, including this one guy who took it incredibly personally, and then, and then went to all of our videos and thumbs down all of the videos <laughs> that we had on YouTube, <laughs> and also went to the trouble of going to a couple of the videos and just writing gay. Uh, and I think the other one was "You're the worst YouTube channel I've ever seen." <laughs> Dude, I love it. And, but my response was, I think when he said, I think I, when he said gay, I think my response was very yes. And then when he said, this is the worst YouTube channel, I just went, thanks, with an exclamation. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you can't, we, he's uh, not going to win in that situation. No, he's not. That's funny as shit. Yeah. I mean, come on now. <laughs> I, it's like one person. I mean, I should know better than, than trolling well-known YouTubers. How did you troll a well-known YouTuber? Well, no, not the YouTuber himself, but I mean, I was literally like, this guy sucks. I hate him. When I don't know why anybody that? watches. Huh? When did you say that? When? Yeah. Oh, well, there was like six in somebody nine else's chat ago. room. No, 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 no. In the, on YouTube uh, in the comments, oh. it was just a video. This is there was one oh, YouTuber. Make, okay, I really you already told me that. I guess Markiplier. I, guess. Oh. I don't like we're him. Go, we're I coming really, after you. Really we're hate, coming after you. I really hate. That's his not a videos. threat, though. If he's listening, don't sue me. I don't like you. Yeah, we. I don't like you. I don't know you, but I don't like you because he doesn't like you. Anyway, that's how we roll. At I got so agents. I got so mad at one point uh -huh. watching a video of his. <laughs> That I was like, <laughs> I don't get it. Because, you know, it's one of those things where you're like, how does some some people get so big on YouTube and Twitch and these things? And you're just like, I don't I don't understand. I, to I totally agree. I mean, that's I, 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 it's not that I'm big headed, but half of the people on YouTube and half of the people on Twitch, at least half the, of the bigger names, I don't like. I don't like and I don't get it. Like you guys are so unless unless maybe there's. I you know I guess I hope to think that the world has a lot more cool people out there, but <laughs> th like certain dudes you're like there is there's that many nerds huh like there is that many diehard like stereotype of a nerd out there that's gonna like a dude like this because this dude's whack like he's actually stupid yeah in I just don't get it I think he's I not real at all he's just they're just these weird nerds yeah. I accused Markiplier of being on steroids. That's what I did. <laughs> that is an awesome comment. Because he's so hyperactive. Like, it's yes. so fake. He's so hyper and fake. I'm, but uh, I was like, well, he, then he must be on steroids. My name is Joe and I endorse this message. Yeah. Yeah, you're on steroids, dog. <laughs> you know? But then somebody was like, he's not on steroids. <laughs> and then they went into somewhere and I was like, yeah, but he's always angry all the time. And he's like screaming and yelling and just <sighs> being a weirdo. And they were like... And then that was weird because I actually had to go onto like the drug administration website to look up <laughs> their definition of steroid, the side effects of steroid use, because the per because this person actually responded to me and said, steroids, anabolic steroids do not make you angry. <laughs> okay. And I was like, oh, really? Let's have a look at this then. Yeah, what about that wrestler who roid raged and killed that killed his family? Happens all the time. Yeah. So, you know. More than you would think, public. Watch yeah. out. This guy's going to, he might show up at our door. Well, and, I mean, I don't want to go against a dude on roids. I mean, I'll still no. take you down. So don't do it, but... Kick yeah. him in his tiny testicles. Yeah. And he'll be like, stop it. <laughs> I'm coming here to beat you up. Because doesn't it make your voice higher or something? I don't know, but it definitely shrinks your nuts. It gives you tits. It gives you tits. <laughs> it makes you really angry. Yeah. But it does make you jacked. Whew. Well, on that note, yeah. this is uh, Renegade Agent. <laughs> <laughs> and as always, thanks for listening.